This is the story of a man who survived for over 400 days in the world's largest and most ruthless ocean, the Pacific Ocean. He fought a battle between life and death, set a world record, and returned alive after 14 months. But as soon as he came back, something happened that landed him in jail. Let's dive into the complete story in this video. The name Pacific Ocean alone can make people sweat. In the world, 71% is covered by water, divided into four oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, and Arctic. The Pacific is the largest ocean, spanning a whopping 165 million square kilometers and could almost entirely engulf the landmass, which is about 148 million square kilometers. There are very few islands in the Pacific, and some are so remote that no human has ever set foot on them. If someone were to get lost in the Pacific Ocean, finding them would be nearly impossible. The man who survived for 14 months in the Pacific was named Jose Salvador Alvarenga. He had a tiny seven-foot boat where he couldn't even lie down properly. And yet, he survived over a year in this small boat, facing the ocean's brutality and setting a world record that no one has broken to this day. Jose's story begins in 2012. He was a 36-year-old experienced fisherman living in a village called Costa Azul in Mexico. On November 17, 2012, Jose and a companion set out for their usual fishing trip on their small seven-foot boat. They couldn't travel far to fish since the boat was too small, equipped with only an engine and a small fridge. They planned to return in 30 hours. As they laid their fishing nets about 120 kilometers off the Mexican coast, a dangerous storm suddenly appeared on the horizon. In a desperate bid to save themselves, they abandoned their fishing nets and sped towards the shore. For six continuous hours, they battled the storm, coming within 20 kilometers of the shore when suddenly, their boat's engine failed. The shoreline and their village were still visible, but the storm was gaining on them. They had a radio and sent their location to their boss, hoping for help. But as luck would have it, the radio's battery died shortly after. On one side, they could see the shore, and on the other, the terrifying storm approaching like it was ready to swallow them whole. The winds grew stronger, and their boat began drifting further away from land. Soon, the shore vanished, and the waves pulled them farther out to sea. By the time their boss received their message and sent a search party, it was already too late. Every moment, Jose and his companion were being carried farther from the shore. In just five days, their boat had drifted 450 kilometers away from the coast. Because of the boat's small size, it was almost impossible for the search teams to spot them. They had no flare gun or any other means to signal for help. Their food had run out two days earlier, and without fishing gear, they couldn't catch more fish. Starving and desperate, the men saw a bird land on their boat. They pounced on it in hopes of catching it, but the bird escaped. A few hours later, another bird landed. This time, they made a careful plan and managed to catch it. They survived by eating birds that landed on their boat. They also stored rainwater in plastic bottles to drink, as drinking salty seawater could be deadly. When there was no rain, they resorted to drinking the blood of fish and turtles they caught. Days turned into months, and the mental torture they endured was unimaginable. After four months, Jose's companion could no longer handle the suffering and committed suicide. Now Jose was all alone in the boat, surrounded by nothing but endless water, with little hope of survival. Yet, he somehow managed to carry on. By now, Jose had been lost at sea for over six months, having traveled an estimated 8,000 kilometers. One day, he spotted a cargo ship in the distance, the first ship he had seen in six months. He waved, screamed, and tried to signal for help, but the ship was too far away to see him. As the ship disappeared from view, Jose felt like death was inevitable. After 11 months at sea, Jose's boat had traveled over 8,000 kilometers. His clothes were in tatters, and he only had an undershirt left to protect himself from the sun. But finally, after 439 days, on January 30th, 2014, Jose spotted coconuts floating in the water and birds flying nearby, signaling that land was close. After over half a day of rowing, he finally reached an island. As soon as he got close, he jumped from his boat and swam to shore. After months at sea, he finally touched solid ground. The island was called Iban Atoll, one of the smallest and most remote islands in the world. 
it was nothing short of a miracle that the winds had carried Jose's boat to this island. Had the winds been just slightly different, Jose would have missed the island entirely and might have ended up 5,000 kilometers away in the Philippines. Or worse, he may have never made it to land at all. After exploring the area, Jose found a small house on the island. When someone emerged from the house, it was the first time in 14 months that Jose had seen another living human being. Overwhelmed with emotion, he broke into tears. Soon after, local authorities arrived. Jose recounted his incredible journey to the police, but no one believed him. How could someone survive for 438 days in a small boat without proper food or supplies? To prove his story, Jose contacted his boss, who confirmed that he had indeed been lost at sea over a year ago while on a fishing trip. Since Jose had reached another country without a visa, he had to go through some legal proceedings before finally being sent back to Mexico. But the journey didn't end there. The family of Jose's companion who had died accused Jose of cannibalism, claiming he must have killed and eaten his friend to survive. After some legal battles, Jose was cleared of the charges. Later, he published a book titled 438 Days, where he documented his entire ordeal. Jose's incredible story teaches us that no matter how difficult life gets, there is always a way out. Thank you for watching the video till the end. See you in the next one.